we good? Awesome. Y'all ready to sing? Sing with me. Breaking through the silence With glory in the highest The hope of all creation Resting in his mother's arms A song on the horizon Ringing through the heavens The long-awaited Savior Has come to set the captives free Come to set the captives free Set us free. Hope has a name, Emmanuel, the light of the world, who broke through the darkness. All hail the King, Emmanuel, the light of the world, the glory. We didn't see it coming, the glory of redemption was started in a manger, ended in an empty grave. My name is Reverend Stephanie Reed Meyer, and it is truly a blessing to be in worship with you all this morning. If you are joining us online, we encourage you to please register your attendance with us this morning. Even though you're worshiping with us virtually, we feel your presence here this morning. If you are worshiping with us in person, you already did your attendance on your way in. So great job. You're ahead of everyone. I have a few announcements I'd like to highlight this morning. The first of which is we will actually have a blue Christmas service this year at the church. If you don't know what a blue Christmas service is, it's typically a time for people to come together who may have a hard time during this season. Maybe they've experienced a death. Maybe Christmas just isn't a joyful season for them. This is a service that acknowledges 
anywhere you may be on this journey. It's going to be really powerful, and it is available either in person in the sanctuary or online, and that's on December 21st at 7 p.m. I also want to remind you that our Christmas Eve services are live for registration. We ask that you please register for those services. We have all services available. They're at 11 a.m. That's Table of Grace service. Uh, full disclosure, we are going to plan to have it here in Trinity Hall unless the numbers are a little more. And then just to be safe, we'll move to the sanctuary so that we can spread out a little more. But it will still be a Table of Grace modern service no matter where we are. We will also have a family service at 4 p.m. And then traditional services at 6, 30, 9, and 11. And the Table of Grace modern service will be candlelight too. So we hope your family will make plans to join us at Christ United for Christmas Eve. I have the pleasure now of welcoming Jim and Amy Wilson forward. We are going to light our Advent candles this morning. And I'm going to get them a mic real quick. Advent journey continues to unwrap the Christmas story this morning. An angel spoke to shepherds in a field and shared the promise of a coming child. The shepherds must have felt many emotions as they heard this news. Yet even in the midst of uncertainty and surprise, they chose to react with joy. We again light the candles of peace and of hope. And today we add the pink candle of joy as a reminder of the shepherds' reaction to hearing Amen. Will you stand and sing with me?
going into a very pleasant surprise. Our children's ministry and our children's choir got together to create a children's pageant this year, so we have the pleasure of watching it today. In the name of the Lord, the Lord be comforting and the Lord be with you. An angel told Mary that she would have a child who was sent by God. The angel said the sh child should be called Jesus. Mary was confused. For she is not yet married to Joseph, but Mary answered the angel, saying, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. In those days, Israel was part of the Roman Empire and was ruled over by the Emperor Caesar Augustus. Soon after Joseph and Mary learned that Mary would have a child, the Emperor Augustus commanded all the citizens of the empire to return to their hometown so that they could be counted and their names could be listed in a census. This census would show how many people lived in the Roman Empire at that time. Both Joseph and Mary were descended from the family of King David, so they returned to their hometown of Bethlehem, King David's birthplace. When they reached Bethlehem, the town was filled with people who had come in from the countryside to be counted by the Romans. Joseph and Mary went from inn to inn to find a place to stay, but all the inns were full. Although people could see that Mary was about to give birth, there was no place for them to stay in Bethlehem. Then just before Mary was to give birth, a kind person suggested that they stay in a warm stable with all the animals, and it was there that the baby Jesus was born. Mary wrapped her firstborn child in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. baby Jesus was born, shepherds were tending their sheep in a field near Bethlehem. Suddenly a great light shone upon them, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The shepherds were frightened by the vision, but the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For there is born to you this day in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior who is a Messiah, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby in a stable wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then suddenly the shepherds saw that the sky was filled with angels, and the shepherds heard them praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. When the angels had left, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this birth that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. Thank you. 
inside the stable, they knelt to pay honor to the Christ child, and the friendly beasts gathered around the new baby to bring him comfort and love. A magnificent star was seen shining in the sky in the east. The Bible teaches us that this star was placed in the sky as a sign of the birth of baby Jesus and where travelers might find him in, honor to pay, in order to pay him homage. seen by the three wise men of great learning and wisdom who had traveled from the far east and, and who had spent many years studying the stars and mysteries of the world. They dressed in rich clothing of bright colors that was adorned with many jewels. Often such wise men were called king by their people in their land. When the three wise men saw the stars shining in the sky, they remembered that the prophets said that a great leader would be born in the world and that a great star would lead them to this newborn king. The wise men began following the star to Bethlehem so they could show honor to the newborn child. The three wise men followed the star to the holy family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. When they saw the child, they knew at once this was the great leader they sought. They knelt before him and presented him with, rare, with gifts of gold and rare perfumes called frankincense and myrrh. So it was that a little baby was brought into the world and was called Jesus. And the animals, the shepherds, great kings, and wise men bowed before him because he knew that he was the Christ child, the Messiah, the King of kings, the Lord of all. <laughs>
Amen. We actually have a few of these children in the congregation. Will you help me in thanking them for such a great pageant? They all look super embarrassed, so great job. <laughs> Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I sat in my first day of second grade, I could not have felt more out of place. At first glance around the classroom, I didn't recognize any of the other students. There were also so many of them. How could one class have this many students in it? I also wasn't quite sure where to put my bicycle helmet. I had rode my bike to school for the first time ever. Was I supposed to put it in that locker with my name on it? Or was I gonna have to carry it around with me all day? That would be super embarrassing. As I continued to take in my surroundings, I noticed other new things. We had a bathroom inside of our classroom. We also had this huge bookshelf overflowing with books. Even with all of this new, my feeling of uncertainty loomed the largest. It was my first day of second grade, my first day at the public school just down the street from my childhood home. For the last four years of my life prior to being in the second grade class, I had attended a private school. I knew that school. I knew all of the hallways. I knew the playground inside and out. I knew the teachers. I knew my classmates. I even knew students in the grade above and below me. I knew where that tiny library was tucked at the, at the end of a seemingly hidden stairway. My new school, though, it was just that. It was new. I didn't have my usual feelings of comfort and com confidence. I felt like everyone else knew exactly what they were doing. I was the outsider. I was the new kid. Our Advent series this season has been about unwrapping the Christmas story. We began with a promise given by the prophet Isaiah that a child would lead. And last week, Paul led us through Mary and Joseph and the life-changing announcement they received that they would be the parents of Jesus. One of the most beautiful things about our Christmas story is that there are so many different roles we can imagine ourselves in. There are so many different personalities and sides to the story. We can truly allow ourselves to be enveloped into this beautiful story. For our nativity scene this week, we've added yet another aspect, the shepherds. Let's read the shepherds this story this morning from the book of Luke. We're going to be in chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. We heard a little bit in the pageant, but I'll read it again just to jar your memory. Hear these words. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, glory to God in the heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. 
the shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Amen. Most of us are probably familiar with the history of shepherds. While in the Old Testament, there are a lot of super notorious characters like Abraham, Moses, and David who tended sheep, in Jesus' time, the shepherds were actually at the bottom of the social ladder. Shepherds were often considered dirty. They were considered unintelligent and kind of even unskilled. Tending sheep took grit. It didn't really take a genius. Sheep went where the shepherds led them, and they rarely wandered off from the pack. And I will say that these shepherds here in Luke's version of the story, they don't seem super impressive either. The angel stands before them with God's glory shining, and we read that the shepherds were terrified. It doesn't say they ran off and were never seen again. But when the first attribute given to you is terrified, things aren't looking great for your narrative. The people of Jesus' time already had these super low expectations of shepherds. And being described as terrified probably doesn't do them any good. Yet, as the angel continued the proclamation and as more angels gathered around, the shepherds overcame their fear. These outsiders, the ones overlooked by everyone else, the shepherds, that's who decide to go and visit baby Jesus. I am a big Harry Potter fan. Like, it's kind of serious. It may be a little of a problem. I try not to preach and use Harry Potter all the time. Today's your lucky day. I adore everything about each book. When I think of the shepherds making their way to baby Jesus in Bethlehem, it's really easy for me to make parallels to Harry Potter's first foray into the wizarding world. Harry didn't even know magic existed prior to receiving his letter to the magical school of Hogwarts. Harry lived with his aunt and uncle and cousin who constantly berated him and made him feel like less than. Harry doesn't even have any friends when we read his first book at the very beginning. He literally lives with spiders and cobwebs in a cupboard underneath the stairs. Yet with one letter, Harry's life is turned upside down. He felt like an outsider when he lived with his aunt and uncle and cousin, and he still feels like an outsider as he slowly makes his way into the wizarding world. Harry gasps as he sees magic. He's in awe of a magical feast that's set in front of the students on their first night at Hogwarts. Harry is constantly asking questions about how things work as he tries to make up for lost time. Harry is an outsider in the non-magic world and in the wizarding world at first. Yet he doesn't let his fear or his trepidation keep him from being in awe of the magic that surrounds him. The shepherds were terrified. They were scared. Yet after hearing the angels sing and rejoice, they didn't run in the opposite direction. Instead, they ran to Bethlehem to see the baby that the angels sang of. They leaned into the awe that they felt after hearing the angels. They leaned into the awe of the birth of the Savior. Each of us has felt like an outsider at some point in our life. I would venture to say that even most of us, we don't really seek out to become outsider. It's not a label we want to have. We usually don't have a choice in the matter. It's not something we choose to be. That's a big reason that feelings of loneliness and isolation come when we feel like other, when we feel as someone that's different than everyone else. 
it's not hard to feel like an outsider. With the world changing as rapidly as it is, and with the polarizing opinions of anyone with access to the internet, it seems as if lines are being drawn more and more frequently between us and them. We can't always be in the in crowd, no matter how hard we may try. When you're an outsider, it's hard to believe that you could ever be something different, that you could ever truly belong after being on the outside. There's almost this type of skepticism that develops out of that loneliness and that isolation. I can't help but think of all those teen movies where a girl is seen as the outcast and then the popular crew gives her like a makeover or they pair her up with a popular guy and everything seems great except then she discovers that it was all a prank or a dare or a bet. When you're an outsider, it's hard to believe that your status could ever truly change. Yet the shepherds don't live into any skepticism they may be feeling. They overcome any feelings they may have had of being less than, and they overcome any fear or doubt, and they take a next step. They go to see Jesus. They don't give a second thought as to whether or not they will be welcomed at the manger. The angels chose them. The angels chose some of the people on the smallest, the lowest end of the social ladder and invited them in to the greatest, most powerful story, the most inclusive story. That's part of the magic of the Christmas story. It is a story for all people. As my second grade class was dismissed for recess on that first day of school, I wasn't prepared for Jessica, a girl in my class, to invite me to play with her on the playground. The relief and hope that flooded over my body was indescribable. It only took a simple invitation to completely eradicate the fear and loneliness I felt as a sixth, second grader on that first day of school. I found a place to belong, even if it was only for a few minutes on the playground. When Harry Potter begins at the wizarding school, he meets a new friend and then learns more about his parents who died when he was a baby. He finally starts to feel like less than an, like more than an outsider. He finds a place to belong. As the shepherds make their way to Bethlehem, I wonder if for once in their lives, they feel hopeful that they may find a place where they're welcomed, where they truly belong. This morning, we lit our third Advent candle. Did you notice as Jim and Amy lit the candle that this week's candle color is pink? The other two weeks were purple, and next week will be purple too. The third week of Advent today is always pink, the candle, and it's always represented joy. It reminds us that although we definitely prepare our hearts seriously for the coming of Christ in this season of Advent, that we should also find space for joy as we prepare our hearts. The angels sang joyfully in our scripture reading. And as we talk about these feelings of being an outsider, we can't ignore the feeling of joy that comes when we finally feel as if we belong. When we find that sweet spot where we finally fit in. When you're invited to play with someone at recess. Or when you realize there's more to your life than living in a cupboard under the stairs. Or when you're finally seen for more than your social status. That is when true joy develops. Belonging 
always brings joy. Always. Inclusion always makes people feel like people. The story of Christmas, the story of Jesus' birth, is truly a story for all, including the outsiders. We add shepherds to our nativity this morning. They're over here to the side. You can tell because they're near the cotton ball sheep, of course. If you're building your nativity with us at home, we invite you to add the shepherds this morning. And I love that we add the shepherds today on this third Sunday, not just because it's our joy Sunday, although that's a huge part of it. It's also because they're added just after Mary and Joseph. Shepherds are an important piece of the nativity. Shepherds are included in almost every nativity scene, unless it's one of those that just features the holy family. The nativity scene includes shepherds. Shepherds. Those guys we were just talking about who were looked down upon. The smelly ones who spent their days with animals, who spent their nights sleeping wherever they could find space. That's who the angels first invite to the birth of Jesus. This Christmas story is for all. It's especially for those who know what it's like to feel like they don't belong. The shepherds remind us that there are no limits to God's grace and to God's love. It is available to all people. As we continue to prepare ourselves for the celebration of the birth of Christ, we must remember that this story is for us. It's ours to claim. It's a story that is especially for us when we feel like outsiders, when we feel like we don't belong. In our scripture reading, we see the shepherds arrive at their destination where they share with everyone what they've heard the angels say. It doesn't tell us in black and white that they were welcomed by Mary and Joseph, but we know they are. They were welcomed into a holy space, a place where they finally belonged. We all belong in Christ's story. We are all invited to embark on the true spirit of Christmas, to ready our hearts with joy as we look towards Christmas Day. Every time we see a nativity with shepherds, may we remember that we all belong. You belong. Amen. As I invite Meredith up to lead us in a time of prayer, I want to encourage us all this week to find ways to spread those feelings of belonging and accepting to everyone we come into contact this week. Let's join Meredith in a time of prayer. Would you pray with me? God of all people, you sent Jesus for the young and the old, for the meek and the lost, for the wealthy and the powerful, for the poor and the despised. Too often we forget this fact. Too often we hear the story of the poor young woman from a poor nowhere town chosen to carry your son, and we do not see our neighbor. We don't see you in the face of the poor unwed mother. Too often we hear of the very first people to learn of the birth of your son, the poor, lowly, despised shepherds, and we do not see our neighbor. We don't see you in the face of the poor, the homeless, or often the outcasts. Forgive us, we pray. Teach us to recognize you in every face we see, in every outstretched hand. God of mercy, our world often feels like a broken place. We pray today for healing for all those who are ill and wisdom for the medical professionals who care for them. We pray for peace in our country and around the world. We pray for solace for the anxious and the afraid. 
We pray that the hope that comes with this season of waiting will be ours and that the joy that we feel in being your beloved children will be evident to others. We pray all of this in the name of your most precious son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we sing this next song, I invite us all to center our hearts in a time of offering. If you would like to give to this church today, there are offering boxes as you exit the space, or you can give online by visiting cumc.com give. There are a ton of different ways to give this season, and we are thankful for the many ways you support and love this congregation. Let's give together. Amen. Will you stand and sing with me? Savior 
Amen. As we leave this place and re-enter the world, remember that you have a space to belong here. We want you to feel welcome here at Christ United. I am always available. My email is stephanie at cumc.com. We are here to serve and love your family as we work together to grow closer to Christ. As you leave this place and re-enter the world, may you remember that you belong. Just like the shepherds belong in that nativity scene, you too belong in Christ's story. Go forth strengthened and renewed. Let us join together as we sing our benediction response.